One Zambia, One Nation. Good evening. You're now watching Zanisme News with me, Ethel Chanda. We look at the headlines. President Hichlema extols the U.S. on Lobito Corridor project. Government commended for securing debt restructuring. Potato DC flags of relief maize distribution. Plus high tuberculosis cases worry government. Zanis News in detail. President Harainde Hichlima has expressed happiness with the rate at which the United States is making decisions on the implementation of the Lobito Corridor project. President Hichlima says Zambia will greatly benefit from the project once completed as it will open up the mining, tourism and agricultural sectors. Lakson Makosa now reports. President Akainde Hichlema held talks today at State House with a high power delegation from the U.S. Senator. To open the discussion was the immense benefits Zambia will accrue from the Lobito Corridor project once completed. Because we are the hub to connect the Atlantic Ocean to the Indian Ocean. It's through us. And that's why Lobito is very important to us. Very, very important. And so far the work that has been done around Lobito Corridor uh, the partnership with uh, Angola, Congo DR, Zambia, the U.S. is really appreciated. And the speed at which the U.S. is making decisions appears to be faster than what is ordinary. And we appreciate that. We wanted you to know that we appreciate that. Because it will open a hell lot of opportunities uh, for us. It's not just the rail line. It's the roads, other infrastructure around. It's opening up agriculture, it's opening up uh, tourism, it's opening up mining. President Hichlema also used the visit by U.S. delegation to reaffirm Zambia's commitment in building stronger bilateral ties with the U.S. government. Acknowledge the value of this partnership, mutual benefits, mutual respect, learning from each other. And uh, indeed, you touched on something very important, the climate change inducing floods causing disease burden to increase, uh, climate change causing drought, inducing food insecurity and energy insecurity, Senator Mary, Chair of the Appropriations Committee. And these are the areas that are challenging us, but we appreciate the support that we're getting from partners such as yourselves. And the U.S. government has expressed happiness in the way in which Zambia is handling investment being spearheaded by the U.S. and how it is impacting people's lives in the country. Since 2000, the United States has invested now over $7 billion in public health, in education, in food security, and more here in Zambia. We saw and are seeing the positive results of that investment, as well as the potential that we see here for so much more to come, building on that progress and strengthening the partnership uh, the, between the U.S. and Zambia. On the Lobito Corridor project, the U.S. expressed optimism that it will enhance economic growth in the region and better the livelihoods of the people. For Zanis, I'm Lakson Makodza. Zambia Revenue Authority, ZRA Commissioner General Dingani Banda, says the coming in of the Kazungula Bridge Authority is expected to enhance the operations and sustainability of the Kazungula border. Speaking in an interview with Zanis in Kazungula, Mr. Banda has observed that the authority will address the issues to do with maintenance and security of the facility, among others. Here is a report. Zambia and Botswana will tomorrow sign the Memorandum of Understanding on the establishment of the Kazungula Bridge Authority, which will take lead in the operations, maintenance, and development of additional infrastructure of the bridge the initiative has cheered Zambia Revenue Authority Commissioner General Dingani Banda. Major development and, uh, from our side as Zambia Revenue Authority in the sense that um, since the launch of the bridge in May 2021, um, ZRA had assumed the responsibility of handling the maintenance at the bridge, so would spend our own money to maintain some of the facilities at the bridge. But now with the coming in of the Kazungura uh, uh, Bridge Authority, 
it means that uh, there will be a dedicated institution that will be responsible for the uh, sustainability of the various reforms that are taking place at the, at the, at the border. Mr. Banda has also announced that the Zambia Revenue Authority has started the effective management of the Gazungula One border post through various innovations. What we intend to achieve is an environment where we don't subject both tourists and the cross-border traders to multiple checkpoints, multiple interventions. We want to ultimately have a single payment point where all payments are being made at the border. And as of today, we have launched for the first time the point of sale at the border, meaning that uh, even as a tourist comes in, they don't need to go around to the bureaus. They can easily pay using their debit card, the credit card, or whatever mode of, of payment. We are also working towards the connecting the system that uh, ZRA uses with Interpol, the I-24, so that uh, once a declaration is made to the Zambia Revenue Authority, it's in the back office, a check is already done with Interpol, rather than one moving from one queue to another in terms of follow-ups. We are also uh, aiming to address issues that uh, cross-border traders go through. As you can see, most of them, they spend four, five hours, six hours at the borders. It's unacceptable in this modern time. Border traders have overcome the interventions by Zambia Revenue Authority. We are even able to, to clear, even if you are in Jobek, where you are, you are able to do it on your, on your phone. Mm. When you just hear, you just reach here, you just show them to say, I've already declared this from South Africa, or I've declared this from any other country, you go outside the country. These interventions by Zambia Revenue Authority will streamline the effective operations of the Gazungura one-stop border post. For the in Gazungura district, southern province, I'm Sunday Warrior. Botswana President Mokwesi Masasi has arrived in the country for a two-day working visit. President Masisi arrived in Zambia via Kazungula by road before proceeding to the tourist capital Livingston. The two heads of states will witness the signing of an agreement to establish the Kazungula Bridge Authority. Here is a report. Botswana President Mangwesi Masisi has arrived in the country for a two-day working visit. President Masisi arrived in Zambia via Kazungula by road before proceeding to the tourist capital Livingston. Republican President Hagain Dechlema was on hand to receive President Masisi both in Kazungula and Livingston. While in Kazungula, a quarter guard military parade was hosted in honor of the visiting head of state. The two heads of states we witnessed the signing of an agreement to establish the Kazungula Bridge Authority, KBA. The agreement seeks to take lead in the operations and maintenance, as well as development of additional infrastructure of the bridge and associated facilities. The two presidents will further oversee the signing of an agreement on the guidelines on tourism and events on the Kazungula Bridge, which will result in additional infrastructure being built to attract tourists to the Joint Permanent Commission of Cooperation, among other agreements. <laughs> Kalan Muchima, reporting for the news, Southern Province. Still in the news, Vice President Mutale Nalumango says the date restructuring program has been achieved with support from the Zambian people who have continued to remain united. Mrs. Nalumango says if the country continues on this trajectory, Zambia can overcome some of the challenges, including the dry spell, which has threatened food security. Speaking when she officiated at the FNB, her women in defense breakfast meeting in Lusaka today, the vice president commended the bank for recognizing women in defense and security. Speaking at the same event, Lusaka province minister Sheo Mliata noted that women should support each other in every sector for the country to rise to higher levels. 
and FNB Zambia Board representative Yande Mwenya reaffirmed the bank's commitment to helping women rise in the country. Chief Executive Officer for FNB, Kapumba Chola, commended government for the successful debt restructuring program as this will put the country on the path of recovery. Because you are there supporting your president today, we can celebrate that we have reached this milestone. The date of Zambia has been restructured. It is worth celebrating. It is worth celebrating. Yes, there are still challenges. We can't run away. There are issues that should unite us. This must unite us because it's good for the country. And even the drought, I can assure you, let us unite, we'll be able to go through. We should not sit back and watch. Let us all rise. Every time we think about, every time we think about a soldier, let me use the word soldier, we just think it's a man. We just think it's a man. Today we celebrate. For me, I call it victory for you. You have defended your homes. You have defended your homes, your children, and the nation. What a great thing. Hidden quietly there, but today we say thank you for what you have done for Zambia. Thank you for joining us as we reaffirm our commitment to helping every woman rise. Especially in this month, March, where we celebrate the achievements of women and I'm reliably informed the girls are included as well. Your Honor, Madam Vice President, since the launch of FNB in Zambia in 2009, we have continued to invest in technology so that our customers can enjoy world-class banking products. It is my hope that we do not just acknowledge their journey, but truly appreciate the unwavering spirit it took to secure their place in the critical defense and community leadership space. Their dedication to our nation's security is a testament to their strength and resilience. In a related story, Anglican Bishop of Luapula, Robert Mumbi, says the debt restructuring deal that government has clinched with eurobond holders will help lower the cost of living in the country. Bishop Mumbi says government will be able to save funds towards bettering the living standards of people. We have the details from Godfrey Chikumbi. President Hala Indeichlema yesterday announced on his socials the clinching of the debt restructuring deal with eurobond holders. The deal comes with $3.5 billion of restructured debt Acknowledging this debt restructuring deal as a huge step towards economic reconstruction, stakeholders in Lopula province have reacted to the news with a lot of enthusiasm and excitement. Anglican Bishop of Lopula, Robert Mumbi, has described the announcement by the head of state as good news. It must be good news. It means that um, if the restructuring of this debt is, is, is come to fruition, that means that we we are going to have a relief. And I would urge the government to make sure that we they talk, uh, they walk the talk. They must always make sure that every way goes into development. Bishop Mumbi believes the benefits of the debt restructuring deal to the ordinary citizens will be immense. The restructuring of the debt will mean that uh, it will trickle down to the to the poor, to the to the people who are on the ground. That is very fine because uh, people's lives are, are, are they are choked. Uh, you can see how the, uh, the the prices of things have gone up, and 
and fuels and everything. Business and development expert Emmanuel Monsanje believes there will be more liquidity in the economy now that the debt deal has been clinched. TDF obviously will go up, I think, in the next, um, in the next budget that is coming. The reason being that um, there will be more money now seated in the accounts because that money that could have gone into repayment now should somehow, somewhere, go into CDF, CEC, and many other developmental channels. Luopula historian and writer Boyd Chipili says Zambia must learn from the debt burden that the country has had to endure. We are a developing country. We cannot manage to borrow, misuse the money, and put the burden on the next generation or on the next government. So with this relief, it is now upon ourselves, the youths and um, uh, the general citizenry to take responsibility. Godfrey Chikombi, Zanis TV in Mansa. Now, a combined team of officers from Civil Aviation Authority, Zambia Airport Corporation Limited, Ministry of Transport and Ministry of Infrastructure and Urban Development from Lusaka is in northwestern province to undertake feasibility studies on the four proposed sites for the construction of a new airport. This follows recommendations from the Secretary to the Cabinet based on the previous technical assessment conducted on the old Solwezi Airport in December last year. Speaking when the team paid a credit score on Northwestern Province Permanent Secretary, Gradson Katambi, Zambia Airports Corporation Limited Airdromes Manager, George Chisala, says the team is in the province to assess the technical suitability of the proposed sites in terms of size. Meanwhile, Kenel Katambi says the four proposed sites were picked after considerations such as accessibility, future expansion, security, and value addition to the existing infrastructure in the province. Meanwhile, provincial planner Raymond Lukoma, Raymond Lukomoka indicated that the proposed sites are in Kapijimpanga, Kiafukuma, and Sandangombe areas. See the size for us is just to assess the technical suitability of the size. Mm. Uh, there are some specs that we fair to for some formats. Mm. So whichever, whichever size suits uh, what we want, that's what we go for. So after that, we do our report. Uh, this report and the communication will be shared with the office so that we can narrow down to one site and start the process of getting the site. Uh, so that is our, our mission. Thought that uh, we should choose a place which is easily accessible by everybody. Uh, by signage, it's one of them, so that people are able to see, oh, we are bypassing the road going to the airport. That was one of the considerations. Citizens Economic Commission, CEEC has procured a maize milling plant from Saro Agro valued at about 2 million kwacha for cooperatives in Chavuma district. CEEC Director General Charles Mungule says the initiative is aimed at promoting value addition activities for cooperatives and supporting economic empowerment efforts in the region. More in the following report by Audrey Kalenga. The Citizens Economic Empowerment Commission has procured a milling plant meant to benefit over 30,000 in Chavuma District in northwestern province. Minister of Small and Medium Enterprise Development Elias Muvanga, together with his permanent secretary Sweta Mtelo, toured the milling plant and was impressed with the projected production capacity once fully operational. The plant is going to Chavuma because that area there is no plant. So we want to save Zambezi, Chavuma, Kabompo, that area, so they will be serviced by this plant. Uh, we want to, to say we are also going into the rural, rural, rural to distribute hammer mills. 
CAC Director General Charles Mungule disclosed that the milling plant will soon be delivered to the district once all the formalities are complete. Um, the recipients, but we are also empowering the manufacturer, um, in, in, which is Zambian. And, and, and for us, that's really great. Uh, in terms of who is benefiting, it's a cooperative in Chavuma. Um, um, and, and, and we hope that um, that will really be put to good use. And Saro Agro Industrial Limited General Manager explained that the milling plant has the capacity to produce 400 by 25 kilogram bags of milling meal per day. And the plant is manufactured locally at Saro, having a capacity of 10 tons uh, super roller milling meal or breakfast in a shift in a day. While the minister has urged the private sectors to partner with CEC in areas surrounding irrigation and other mechanization equipment and consider providing loans to farmers and cooperatives in rural areas to maximize on maize production. Trying to speak to Saro to see and any other you know, companies around in the country, those who are into irrigation system. We want to support our small-scale farmers so that we can quickly move on with irrigation, you know, um, method, so that we can fight, you know, the shortage of a millimil or rather uh, food in the country. Kalenga for Zanis in Lusaka. Zanis menus continues. The Disaster Management and Mitigation Unit, DMMU, has started the distribution of 9,000 by 50 kilogram bags of relief maize in Kateta District. Kateta District Commissioner Rafael Piri disclosed that the relief food will benefit people affected by the drought. Hope Walia has more in this report. Provision of adequate and reliable social safety net has been on government's top agenda as evidence through the provision of relief food to districts adversely affected by hunger. Katete District is the latest to receive the relief aid by government. Katete District Commissioner was on hand to flag off the distribution of relief maize in the district. <laughs> Takupatsa ni chima anga 5,000 matumba ya 50 kg. Muwapatsa wa antu bukatete. Panango pita masiku ya wili. Nuntu miraso hii na foni. Ata onjezena ponso 4,000 chima anga. Utenta hauza kutipa notiru kamba. Anatipa sa chima anga chokwa nila 9,000 matumba ya 50 kg. Ndiye. Ten tilongo sole. Ten tuwone mene tinga gavirane. La mulola ake. We are very happy that today we are here to provide relief to the community in Katete district. We are promising you we are going to use our expertise, our experience to make sure that we deliver according to your expectation. And the traditional leadership appreciated government for the timely intervention. Kumamunje zera ma unone na tere kuti umuwa penyera jala dzona dikari umuwa mukambi ra kuti kena kaka kaoneka ah ah zaburo kuza ni kuti atuwa jezera so dembani wena wapa na niri ni becho chida kuma ni choko sabo me bilanchi kweku ukandi zira ni nentuwa na fai kena kadi ni kana jira dami jira na mwezi sasoma. Hope Walia, Katete District, Eastern Province. Shibuyunji Town Council Chairperson Adrian Mwanakanyemba has commissioned a water scheme in Shakemba Village in Nampundo Ward of Shibuyunji District in Central Province. The scheme, which is expected to benefit 1,000 people, is aimed at addressing the water and sanitation challenges in the area. Let's have more in this report. Lack of access to clean water supply in Shankemba village of Shibuyunji district will now be a thing of the past as government through the Ministry of Water and Sanitation in collaboration with Shibuyunji Town Council has installed a water scheme 
which will be supplying water to 15 sections in Nampundo Ward. Residents in the area could not keep calm as for the first time a water scheme of clean piped water has been commissioned. Community leaders expressed their excitement towards the project. Thank the government, the area councillor, the office of the DC and the council for this project. In the past, water was very scarce. People used to get water from the wells. And the, this stretch where we are standing here is a stretch where very, very recently we had the cholera cases. I think everybody knows about these cholera cases. But with the coming of this, I think there will be an improvement. Thank the government for bringing in clean water to the community. I congratulate from the government, my councillor Mobita Lecho, for what she has done in my section. She has brought development for the people who have been struggling for so many years. We miss the water scheme project, and this water scheme project, it came with the 15 stand tap which are in these sections. There is Ngandu section, there is Kasoma section, and the Mungoni section, and even part of Shakemba village, where these stand up are. They are about 15. And I want to thank the government, because this is the first time in Nampundwe ward to have uh, such kind of development. <laughs> Speaking after the commissioning of the water scheme, Shibuyunji Town Council Chairperson Adrian Mwanakanyemba says water challenges in the district will now be a thing of the past. Minister of Water for giving us these schemes in the district. Uh, just this water scheme alone is going to benefit about 1,000 plus uh, people in this area. I'll take this opportunity to thank uh, the local authority, uh, us who are implementers of the monies which are coming, including CDF, which is coming in our district. So I want to assure the people here, I want also to assure the president that as a local authority, we are going to make sure that the monies which are coming, even through CDF, will take it into good use. And Shibuyunji District Commissioner Alfred Shaputo has cautioned the beneficiaries to use the water wisely. As you can see, Tina, that this area we were recording Korea. Korea in Shibuyunji. This is the area where Korea was coming, and this has just come at the right time for us. All this we thank uh, uh, President Akainde Chirema, the Minister of Water Development, and mostly the PS, uh, Joe Kalusa, who, who used to be here as manager uh, for Mulonga Water. And for, for us, it's a plus. You can see the, the, the way was people where, where they were getting the water. But the president has directed that no one, no one drink water from the wells. And for now, I'm directing that this well here should be buried. Because now we have a water scheme, piped water. I hear there are about 16, there are 16 uh, uh, taps uh, they have put here. So I think the people here are cutted. So we don't need this well. This is the way where Korea was coming. And I'll be happy if it's buried now. Zanis reports in Shibuyunji district. On our health segment, the Zambia Flying Doctor Service has successfully held an outreach program in Mufumba district where patients have been treated for various ailments, including malaria. Jennifer Toshi accompanied the team and now reports. To access specialized health services, Kaminzeke Zeke area residents of Mfumbo district have to move about 200 kilometers to the district hospital. However, today they are privileged to receive the Zambia Flying Doctor service with specialized health care. Among the services being offered at the facility include eye screening and dental checkup, something that has pleased the residents. <laughs> Kubonfe fitu fe nwebe ni mweka kuisa isa kuno kwa mezeka nzikukwa idepera 
kuisa mkuu afu wako bantu fuzi ofuchaji te chintu cha kuanga sha hiyo bantu kufumia meno kamufenga mwaenda long distance maybe it's uh, 70 or 80 kilometers from here the Mufumbwe Outreach Team, led by Dr. Nkole Mukuka, gives an update of the outreach. So we saw about 197 patients, in which um, 84 were general cases, general medical cases, 74 were eye problems, and 39 were dental services. So also wants to mention that the specialist station that Mfumbwe District Hospital has started seeing the OBS and GAIN patients, which is women, especially the maternal ones. Reporting for Zanis in Mfumbwe District, Jennifer Mutoshi. Minister of Health Sylvia Masewa says Zambia has continued to record about 15 tuberculosis deaths every day despite the disease being curable. Ms. Masewa has since called for investment and participation of communities in health matters to build a resilient health community against diseases such as tuberculosis. She was speaking when she officiated at this world's World TB Day in Kawe. Despite making strides in the fight against the disease, Zambia continues to record 15 deaths from TB every day. Minister of Health Sylvia Masewo is calling for enhanced efforts in the fight against the airborne disease. She was speaking at the World TB Day commemoration in Kabwe Central Province. Out of pocket expenditure has revealed that 58% of TB patients and their households face catastrophic costs when attending TB services. My ministry in this regard, we will collaborate with the Ministry of Community Development and Social Services to identify TB patients who could benefit from social catch transfer. Provincial Minister Princess Kasune says the region has a high prevalence of TB. It's one of the provinces in the country with a high burden of tuberculosis, uh, commonly known as TB. The choice of Makululu Township to host this year's commemoration is so appropriate because the high numbers of both drug susceptible and drug resistant to tuberculosis cases are very high. The World Health Organization is calling for commitment towards efforts aimed at ending the disease. And USAID Zambia Health Office Director Amy Cunningham says the United States government partnership in Zambia has helped turn the tide against TB. The global fight to end TB, we have strong commitments with concrete targets made by world leaders in the political declaration of the 2023 UN high-level meeting on TB. That was last year, which provide a strong impetus to accelerate the TB response. The U.S. government values greatly our partnership with the government of Zambia to invest in Zambia's greatest resource, all of its people. Eliminating the burden of tuberculosis, or TB, will enable tens of thousands of people in Zambia to realize their full potential in the economy and in the development of their communities. Zanis reports in Kabwe Central Province. And lastly, on our health segment... The Chadiza District Administration has expressed concern with the high number of tuberculosis TB cases in the area. District Commissioner Malan Zimba said this during the commemoration of World TB Day in Chamandala Ward in Mlolo Chiefdom. Jubel Zulu brings us this report. Hundreds of Chadiza residents commemorated World TB Day in Chamandala Ward. Last year, 199 cases of TB was recorded in the district as some tested positive to both TB and HIV. Pano Tulukamba, Monomatum Chadiza, Mu 2023, 199 people. 199 
anadwala matenda ya TB komanso ana 66 below the age of 5 years we are diagnosed with TB in Jadiza district to both HIV and TB. Measures have been put in place to curb further spread. What we have done so far is uh, contact tracing. So basically we are making follow-ups uh, to every patient that tests positive and their uh, subsequent immediate family members and the people that they live with. The other issues that we've addressed is uh, creating mobile TB screening centers that have helped us go into the areas where we're having a population focus of uh, positive TB cases. Others include also screening of uh, inmates in, in a correctional facility within our jurisdiction. It also as well as adherence counseling to some of our clients. These are among us a few measures that we have put uh, in place. Chiefs understand the gravity of the disease. Jubel Zulu, Zanis, Chadiza District, Eastern Province. We continue with the news. The Department of Social Welfare in Changwa District has increased the number of beneficiaries under the Social Cash Transfer Scheme by an addition of 2,344 beneficiaries. The development has chaired Changwe residents who have commended government for exhibiting commitment towards strengthening social protection services for vulnerable groups in the country. Sheila Makosa filed in this report. Government has committed itself to reducing poverty and vulnerability among citizens in the country through various social protection programs, such as the Emergency and Social Cash Transfer Scheme. In Chongwe District, the Department of Social Welfare has started disbursing social cash transfer funds to an additional 2,344 beneficiaries who have since been added to the total caseload of 12,071 beneficiaries in the area. Beneficiaries of the program who are currently receiving their funds thanked government for fulfilling its promise to strengthen social protection for vulnerable groups of people in the area through the scheme. Thank you to the government because this has been the first time that my child is benefiting from social cash, cash transfer. The journey of my daughter is not a easy one. As you can see, she cannot walk. She's always on diapers. Yes. So that has been a main challenge on our side. So for the social cash transfer, I think it will play a very big role in her life. It will help us, like buying for her diapers and then also save for her school. I am president drama easy. Chongwe District Social Welfare Officer Memory Mwanza highlighted the progress made by the department to effectively implement the scheme. Our current case load for the social cash transfer program is 14,415. We recently added 2,344 to increase to that case load. And we have 7,015 that are getting through the service, the mobile service providers and banks, which is Airtel, MTN, Airtel, Zanaco. And then we have 6,019 that are still getting through the table. These are including our new beneficiaries that we added. I'm just here to encourage our public 
and our beneficiaries to use this money for the intended purposes. It is expected that more groups of less privileged people who have not been able to benefit from the social cash transfer scheme despite their vulnerability such as these will have a chance to benefit from the fund in future. Sheila Makosa reporting for Zanis in Chongwe district. Also in the news, Kawa's Christian Life Center Bishop Davis Malulu has called on councils to ensure enforcement on the stipulated opening hours for bars and underage restriction on the sale of alcohol. Bishop Malulu says this will help to reduce alcohol abuse among young people in the country. Namatama Liwanga has the details. Alcohol and substance abuse, especially among the youths, is a growing concern. A number of youths spend their productive time on alcohol consumption, which appear to be unregulated. Kawe's Christian Life Center, Bishop Davis Malulu, wants councils to curtail this by enforcing the law on entry restrictions and the opening of bars. In Zambia, our biggest problem that we have is that there is the implementation of the law, which is very, very bad. The, the laws are there, but in Zambia, we don't implement, implement them. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the local government act, there are time when they should open the bars. When they should open, when they should close. And for people to, to drink any time. Uh, uh, the underage. There's, a, there's an age of 18 years, something. They must go into bars. But you go into this bars. Young, young men, young girls are going into this bars. Some youths have, however, advised their fellow youths to engage in productive activities as opposed to alcohol consumption. <laughs> Reporting for the News News in Kawe, I'm Namatama Liwanga. Eastern Province Permanent Secretary Paul Tolley says equipping people with financial literacy is important as it fosters responsible financial management. Mr. Tolley has commended the Securities and Exchange Commission for its commitment in promoting effective financial management among learners in the province. Sylvester Chimba reports that the PS was speaking in a speech read on his behalf by Provincial Director of Finance, Vincent Sampa, at the launch of the Financial Literacy Week. Government is committed to promoting financial literacy among learners in Eastern Province and the country as a whole. In this regard, the launch of the Financial Literacy Work in Chipata District of Eastern Province by the Securities and Exchange Commission is an initiative aimed at implementing this policy. Eastern Province Permanent Secretary Paul Tolle was represented at the ceremony as guest of honor by Provincial Director of Finance, Vincent Sampa. Financial Literacy Week is an annual campaign aimed at promoting financial education in Zambia. And the objectives align with the national strategy on financial education seek to achieve a financially educated population and improve financial knowledge, skills, motivation, and confidence among Zambians. In today's dynamic economic landscape, Equipping the citizens and especially the youth with financial literacy is critical. Financial literacy extends beyond its numbers. It fosters responsible financial management and informed decision making. I am very privileged to join you all and to officiate at this fourth financial literacy week launch event, which we are commemorating today under the theme. 
and Securities and Exchange Commission Acting Market Development Manager Sitali Mugala said the Commission is committed to knowledge empowering of individuals across all demographics to manage their finances wisely and safeguard their hard earned assets. So it is our collective responsibility as stakeholders to foster positive changes in financial behaviors, ensuring the well-being of individuals and their families. Zambia has diligently observed the financial literacy week for the past 12 years, aligning with the Global Money Week, a global initiative led by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, aimed at promoting Citizenship among children and youth Meanwhile, Anoya Zulu Boys Secondary School walked away with a check worth 10,000 kwacha after emerging as winners of the school's savings competition, beating nine other competing schools in the province. Sylvester Shimba for Zanis in Chipata. Finally, in the news, the Anti Corruption Commission, ACC, has conducted a workshop for Integrity Committee focal point persons in Wapla province. The training is aimed at equipping officers in the province with knowledge and skills on how to execute their roles and responsibilities. Bet Sheba Katewe has more in this report. The Anti-Corruption Commission is an institution mandated to spearhead the fight against corruption through the country. The Commission uses different strategies in its fight, among them awareness campaigns, investigation and prosecution. As part of its strategy in the fight against corruption, the Anti-Corruption Commission has held an integrity committee workshop in Luapla Province. Luapla Province Permanent Secretary Mike Mumba has officiated at the workshop. It has been noted that there is information gap between the province and the district in reporting channels. Hence, calling for this workshop as members of the Integrity Committee must be proactive and beyond reproach in all your dealings, both at work and elsewhere. I wish to therefore urge you that whenever you deal with members of the public seeking services from ourselves, we should respond promptly and efficiently and without bias. This is critical in the promotion of transparency and restoration of public confidence in our various government institutions. And Corruption Commission Senior Investigations Officer Howard Dinyambe has called on officers to be accountable for their conduct at workplaces. It is the mandate of the Commission to keep corruption in the delivery of public goods and services through integrity building within institutions. In order to effectively carry out our roles as IC focal point persons, you must be accountable for your conduct both in your private capacity at your workplace because this will have a direct bearing on the effectiveness of the IC and that of your institution. And Chienge District Commissioner Favorite Musangu is aware of the importance of the workshop, especially now when cases of corruption have continued to be recorded. Uh, Zambia has uh, got a very high number of uh, corruption cases and uh, we are in this uh, verge of uh, fighting corruption. So this is a very important training for us. We have been told that we'll be learning about the national anti-corruption uh, uh, policy which is very cardinal and I'm sure as we head back to the districts uh, we have been told that we have to go and uh, form uh, integrity com committees in, uh, at the district level and these committees will be there to fight uh, corruption which in, in the end will uh, contribute to the development of uh, our country Zambia. Betre Bakatebe reporting for Zanis News in Mansa district in Wapla province. As we end the news, a reminder of the top stories. President Hitchlema extols the U.S. on Lobito Corridor project. Government commended for securing debt restructuring. Potato D.C. flags of relief maize distribution. Plus high tuberculosis cases worry government. Thank you so much for watching Zanis Menus. I'm Ethel Chanda. Pleasant viewing.